Greetings, friends and brethren around the world. This is uh, Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sasovetic. Uh, welcome. Well, what we are seeing these days in October 2022 is that Vatican is renewing a deal with China despite trial of Cardinal Joseph Zen. So, on October 20th of this year, 2022, we have learned from the news that, uh, well, crooksnow.com Vatican 2022, we have learned that in Rome, amidst increased controversy as a trial against a prominent Chinese cardinal continues to move forward in Hong Kong, the Vatican and China will, for the second time, renew their provisional agreement on the appointment of bishops. Speaking to Crux, a high-ranking Vatican official who spoke on the condition of anonymity because they were not authorized to discuss the renewal policy, said the following, I'm quoting, The agreement with China is scheduled to be renewed on the 22nd of October 2022 with no changes to the terms. End of the quote. Though the terms of the agreement have never been made public really, the deal brokered in September 2018, is believed to be modeled after the Holy See's agreement with Vietnam, allowing the Holy See to pick bishops from a selection of candidates proposed by the government. The deal, which many experts in Sino-Vatican relations believe is an initial down payment on eventually forging formal diplomatic ties with China, was renewed in October 2020, just weeks after then United States Secretary of State Mike Pompeo criticized the accord in an article published in a popular conservative magazine. In a commentary published in right-wing magazine First Things, Pompeo highlighted what he argued were human rights and religious freedom abuses in China, suggesting that the Vatican and Pope Francis risk losing moral authority for not challenging China on religious freedom. So this was the news we read, we read from the crux. Now please would you notice the following regarding China and the Vatican from earlier this year, that would be on July the 8th, 2022. Here is some more about their relations that are obviously now being renewed and According to all the data we are receiving, with the intention to deepen that relation and to actually move it up higher and uh, promote it into a formal diplomatic ties. Uh, July 8th, 2022, and uh, it is an article published in the. Uh, it's an article published in the churchmilitant.com, and here is what it says. The Pope is hoping to renew the Vatican's secretive accord with China. This according to an exclusive interview Francis gave to Reuters on Saturday. In tonight's in-depth report, Church Militant's Dr. William Mahoney looks at the Pope's ongoing betrayal of faithful Catholics in China. Cardinal Joseph Zen, and here's a quote about this cardinal, who says, they have sold our church. It's a Hong Kong cardinal. So Hong Kong cardinal Joseph Zen lamented the clandestine Vatican-China Accord, which was first established in 2018 as a provisional agreement between the Holy See and the Chinese Communist Party, or shortened CCP. Yet, despite the disastrous results of that deal, Francis declared in Saturday's interview the following, here is the quote, The agreement is moving well, and I hope that in October it can be renewed. In October, of course, meaning this very month, 2022. Now, Cardinal Zen, here is the quote of his statement, says, Now we are in a desperate situation. Humanly speaking, the church is going to disappear, the real church, end of the quote. The accord was renewed in 2020 and will likely be renewed soon for a third time in this very month as it was announced earlier. So that will be now three days ago, October 22nd. 
In China, says still the, the, the last paragraph in this article in churchmilitant.com, in China there are, in effect, two churches. Those faithful to Rome, known as the Underground Church, and those approved by the Communist Chinese Communist Party, known as the so-called Official Church. Now, since all, this, since all that I've just read, dear friends, have come out, Cardinal Zen was arrested and now is on trial. So, what is going on with this trial? Well, he made some comments and uh, he made some interviews. So, on earlier, uh, several days ago, on October 20th, 2022, we could read that Cardinal Joseph Zen went to trial on September 26th in Hong Kong on charges of supporting pro-democracy movements. He and other trustees of the now defunct 612 Humanitarian Relief Fund were arrested in May for, quote, colluding with foreign forces, end of the quote, under China's controversial national security law. Authorities later changed the charge to failing to register and f- uh, the fund with the government. Zen and the other pleaded not, pleaded not guilty. Zen, age 90, is the retired bishop of Hong Kong. At Mass, the following Sunday, Pope Francis lambasted the Chinese Communist Party for what happened. He said negotiations for normalizing relations with Beijing were over. Uh, quote, we will not stand by while China's political games interfere with Catholics' right to worship, Francis said. The Chinese government has showed a lack of good faith and we cannot continue this fruitless dialogue. End of the quote. Now, this was the expected response from the Pope, but the, what we have just read, this above paragraph that I've just read to you, is fiction. Instead, there is barely, there's been barely, there's barely been a peep of support for Zen from the Vatican. The Cardinal Zen was among the most vocal opponents of the deal, saying it was a betrayal of Chinese Catholics. He said to the Guardian in 2016, and here is the quote of his statement, Maybe the Pope is a little naive. He doesn't have the background to know the communists in China. You cannot go into negotiations with the mentality, we want to sign an agreement at any cost. Then you are surrendering yourself, you are betraying yourself, you are betraying Jesus Christ. If you cannot get a good deal, an acceptable deal, then the Vatican should walk away and maybe try later again. Could the church negotiate with Hitler? Could it negotiate with Stalin? No. End of the quote. So comparing the actions of the Pope, the purported, the purported vicar of Christ, as a betrayal of Jesus Christ is pretty strong. Zen might as well have claimed the Pope was making a deal with the devil. Zen has been speaking up against the 2018 deal for years now, and the Vatican has snubbed him all these years. Now he is facing trial, and the Pope blames Zen for his predicament. Keep in mind that Zen is a cardinal, a prince of the church. End of the quote. Yes, dear friends, Vatican will sacrifice its own for a deal with China as... We have already read all those hints in the public sphere. Now, what about many Roman Catholics who live in China? Well, many Roman Catholics in and out of China had concerns about this deal with China when it happened. Here is a report related to its previous renewal from a group called Church Militant, whose logo is very interesting, you can find it on the internet if you are interested in that. And here is their reaction, and the title of their article was Vatican Renews Deal with the Devil. That was written on October 22nd, 2020. Despite fierce global opposition, Rome has renewed its controversial concordant with China, claiming that the deal has done away with illegitimate bishops and resulted in securing the communion of all Chinese bishops with the Pope. 
Damien Thompson, associate editor of Britain's The Spectator, told Church Militant that the Vatican and the Pope Francis has essentially done a deal with the devil, betraying faithful and suffering Catholics and other Christians into the hands of their totalitarian persecutors. We should pay no attention to claims that this evil concordat is the work of Cardinal Parolin, dreadfully compromised though he is, and that the Pope has merely been misled on this. The responsibility for this wicked act lies squarely with the Pope himself, Thompson stressed. And being that the deal had ended the existence of illegitimate bishops, so-called illegitimate, in effect, prelates appointed by the Holy Father and not by the Chinese Communist Party, Parolin explained that the agreement would not be signed again, but simply extended for another two years ad experimentum. Asked if the pact would remain secret, the Vatican's second-in-command replied, Yes, but it is a relative secret because many contents are already known. By agreement of the two parties, the contents will be kept confidential as long as the agreement is an experiment. Now in comments to church, in comments to church militant, Rahima Mahmoud, head of the UK World Uyghur Congress, said the following, here is the, here is the quote from him, this is a sellout, a betrayal of Catholics and other Christians in China, a betrayal of the Uyghurs, a betrayal of various, of values of human rights and human dignity, and a betrayal of the church's values and moral authority. In the past two years, the situation for religious freedom in China has worsened, not only for the Uyghurs Muslims, but also for Christians, Tibetans, Hong Kongers, and others. Increasingly, experts around the world are recognizing the atrocity crimes against the Uyghurs as a genocide. Only yesterday, she explained, a Canadian Parliament subcommittee described the egregious human rights violations as a genocide. But the very next day, the Vatican renewed its agreement with the Chinese, Chinese Catholic, uh, Chinese uh, Communist Party. Uyghurs, Christians, Tibetans and Hong Kongers will feel today that Pope Francis and the Vatican have abandoned them, she marveled. In September, 88 years old, Chinese Cardinal Joseph Zen, who was refused a meeting by Pope Francis after arriving at the Vatican, pointed out that the deal had left important dioceses with a bishop or when the impending appointment of a bishop approved by the Communist Chinese Communist Party. And here is a quote from his agreement. The agreement concerns from his that statement for the for the press, which says the following This agreement the agreement concerns the appointment of bishops. Well, in two years, there has been no new appointment. On the other hand, under the pretext of the agreement, seven excommunicated bishops were recognized by the Holy See and lamented. In a last-ditch attempt, urging the Vatican to reconsider the treaty, a bipartisan duo of U.S. senators wrote to Pope Francis on Monday, and here is their quote from their letter. As the leader of the world's largest institution of faith, we respectfully request that your holiness do all that you can do to protect the most basic human rights for all people, including Uyghurs in Xinjiang, Republican Todd Young and Democrat Tim Kaine pleaded. Commentators also suggested that news announcing Pope Francis' support for homosexual civil unions was times timed to drastic from the renewal of the China Accord. Now, as far as Pope Francis' promotion of homosexual and civil unions, that was reported also in the Italian press. And uh, when we compare all of these things, we see how things are worsening, because as far as his illegitimate so-called bishops go, the pagan Roman Emperor Constantine, when he had not even been baptized, declared himself a bishop, convened the Council of Nicaea in three and 325 AD insisted on a non-biblical date for Passover and his Godhead views were ultimately accepted at the Council of Constantinople in 381. So while having illegitimate bishops seems to be an issue to some, the reality is that the future of the Church of Rome was to a great degree impacted by the illegitimate Bishop Constantine. So Dear friends, this is basically what is now going on, and this is something to be uh, that we need to watch. Uh, sadly, this is the greatest religious institution in the world, but it's betraying its values and sacrificing its own people. Well, for more information, you can find them on www.bibleprophecynews.net. And until next time, goodbye, friends.